Now, as I was saying, is that social networking is networking within a community and being able to be social about it. You are socializing with the community that you network with. You see that, Mary? The next thing is that, as I said before, the charitable organizations use social networking in order to cut their marketing budget because they don't have a lot of money to advertise, so therefore, blogging is a great tool that's affordable for a lot of the organizations. One of the great blogs that you might want to check out for one of the organizations is Girl Scouts. They have some fantastic blogs. How does one go about creating a blog? Blogger, as I told you before, was first, was the first company, Blogger is through Google, to start creating web blogs. When you go on Blogger, they have, you have to set up an account, and it even has a page that's called your dashboard, and it's your first level account page, and it'll say, welcome <coughs> to Blogger, sign in, it's free, or sign up, it's free. Trust me, it is free. You go on, and in a matter of a couple of minutes, you just basically follow the prompts, and once you follow the prompts, then that leads you to what is known as a dashboard. The dashboard is where you get all of the information in order to create your blogs to post the information that you've gotten, which is your content, onto the templates provided by Blogger. And Blogger has redesigned their entire site. When I show you some of the before templates versus some of the after templates, you are going to be amazed. Now, blogs are, have been called, the term is interchangeable with websites. Blogs really are not websites, they're web logs. But it makes you have a presence on the internet, which you have a presence on the web, so you have a site on the web. That's why people say, oh, your blog is your website. But it's a little bit different than a traditional website. Got it? Okay, it's sort of a website, but it's not. Blogger is a host. So you have a host that provides you with the information that you go on to their site and create your information. So at the end of Blogger, unless you pay for your customization, it will say, such as mine says, characterkids.blogspot.com. Most people who go through Blogger, there is ends up being blogger.com or blogspot.com. I don't know if you can see these very well, but if you look at the first one, the one with the little lavender, those are known as first generation templates. Those were the type of templates that were first used when Blogger was established. The second one, if you can tell the difference between the first one and the second one, looks a lot more cleaner, crisper, and concise if you look at the second one versus the first one. Can you guys see that very well? Gloria, am I in your way again? See if I move this way. Cameraman, am I okay with you? You're okay. All right. Now, these are more of the blogger templates. They've upgraded. If you kind of remember what you saw on the first templates versus these, they continue to redesign them as time passed. So in the beginning, in the 2000s, they continue to upgrade those templates to just about what you see today. So the templates you're looking at now, one is for a person that's a fitness blogger, and the other is for a travel blogger. See, right? You can create your travel blogger. And those are just a few illustrations of the templates that you would see 
on Blogger. Go to their site, sit down, take a couple of minutes, get a glass of lemonade, and within 15 minutes, you will have signed up and have all of the technical difficulties out the way in order to create your own blog. Question. Can you modify the template or use your own? You can modify the templates, sort of. There are a ton of templates that are available through all of the. There are tons of templates that are available from various sites. Some are paid, some are not paid. But a lot of them, they are so cleverly created that most of them you look through and choose the one you want. And you can modify the layout if you mean the design style. But the background of the template, you can't do much in the way of changing that. But you can sort of change things like the color. You can change the font. You can change the way you make the arrangement with the pictures. So you can change those elements of the template. But the basics of the template within itself, you're not really changing the size of the template. You change, you're changing what the template looks like. So I could use the same template as Jackie, but I chose a different color for my template when I chose a different font. And the layout that I use is different. So we have the exact same template, but it doesn't look the same. Another place, there are a lot of sites on the web that you can Google in order to find additional templates, some free and some are relatively inexpensive. You check out some of the sites, and some of them are listed on the reference sheet that you have. So you can look, but mostly you just Google it. Would you be Googling uh, blogging templates? You Google blogging templates. Okay. That's your keyword. <laughs> WordPress. Next to Blogger, WordPress is the next most common form of blogging use. The next most common blogging host is WordPress. Now the funny thing is there's WordPress.org and there's WordPress.com. Now please don't ask me which one costs and which one doesn't, as I couldn't tell you at this time, I forgot. But one is WordPress.com, one is WordPress.org, but I'm on WordPress.com. So I guess that's the free one. <laughs> when you go into WordPress, they have what is also a dashboard. You use the dashboard in order to create your blog and to manage your blog. You, every time you post a new blog, the listing is on your dashboard. It's up to you, the design art architect, to decide what is going to be included in your blog. I can't sit here and create a blog for Raymond unless Raymond tells me specifically everything that he wants in his blog. And even at that, some people say, I'll hire a ghost blogger. Well, the ghost blogger does not think like you. So there are they will miss something. But if you took a few minutes and said, you know, I wanted to add those pictures in my blog of my grandbaby. Even though the blog is about recipes, but you want to say you baked the cake, this is your grandchild's favorite, and afterwards you went shopping, and your grandchild came home and saw the cake, and therefore now everyone's happy because you all had <laughs> Can you have your cake in here too? Thank you! Thank you. I'm testing you all in. Another il these are other illustrations regarding WordPress blogs. If you look at the one that's really colorful with the <coughs> orange in the middle, that's how you create all the graphics and you make them eye appealing. The second one, you can see it, but not as well. So I would actually look at the first one and say, that's the blog that I want to read. The second one, I'll look at it later. But the bad thing about the first one that I want to read is disorganized. That's why I chose it. 
You see, it's no organization to it. It's jumbled. So if your blog is not well constructed, it'll look just like that, like it's jumbled. What goes in what area? The pieces of the puzzle make no sense. This is a blog that these blogs are two that are well constructed. The first is known as a mommy blog. She's blogging the one that you see that has the little circle look like a little cupcake in it. She's blogging not about recipes, but she's blogging about having a relaxing day at the spa. The second blog is a blog that basically is about science. It's someone that's a technical blogger. Can't see the graphics as well as I can, but it's a science blog. So any subject, you can blog about it. Another thing about WordPress, WordPress provides you with ease of use. Can you all say that? Ease of use. Blogger does too, but WordPress you zip in, find a couple of templates, put together your content, your blog is up. Blogger, they have so many designs to choose from that you might sit there and get a little confused by the fact that which one do I use? Do I pick this one? Do I pick that one? So however you decide to go, WordPress or Blogger or both, because you can have a blog on both sites. I have a blog for Character Kids that's on Blogger and I have another blog on Character Kids that's on WordPress. Question from WordPress.com versus WordPress.org and one having a cost and one not. Is WordPress.com the free one by chance restricted to individuals and nonprofits, or is it .org would be for 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 profit entities by chance? No, Dory, that's a good question. Usually .org websites are nonprofit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Like Toastmasters.org. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But either way, thank you. I knew you were listening. <laughs> Since Mary answered that question so eloquently, you still can use WordPress.org even if you're not an organization because they allow you the freedom to use WordPress.com or WordPress.org. And there are a lot of bloggers that are using the .org instead of using the .com. They're using .org, .net, .com either one that you're willing to choose. So some people have just decided I just want to have the .org instead of the .com. Is it an advantage to paying the money to get the .org? A lot of times it's not because most people would rather pay for the .com because the .com is the most commonly used. <coughs> but if you're I'm wondering if the, if the .org or the .net tends to have more of a professional attachment to it and so depending upon what that blog is going to be used for you a person may choose to go with the dot org simply because it maybe a prestigious title of some kind or everything right. Right. right sometimes it is but a lot of times when a person you want to give them a site that they'll easily remember what's easily memorable to most people is that dot com like I'm Jackie Jones dot com cost. Yeah. Write this down. Free. <laughs> Most blogs.com are free. Free. If you get them from Blogger, if you get them from WordPress, your blogs are free or relatively inexpensive. I'm a bargain shopper, baby. I don't like paying for stuff if it's free. <laughs> Now, after you've created a blog, you have to have a way for other people, such as Dory, Tony, Mr. Clemens, Cornelius, to know that your blog is out there. If we don't know your blog is out there, how will we know to read it? That is what leads me to the next part. It's called RSS Feed.
It means really simple syndication. You sign up subscribers. When you are exchanging information, you make sure that you ask the person that read your blog to subscribe to your blog. And in order to do that, you have to input this symbol so therefore your blog can be subscribed by Dan all the way in the back and he will disperse your blog on his site so his readers will read your blog. His readers will comment on your blog and his readers will come become a part of your blogging community. Bridget might decide that she wants to take her blog and send it to Mary. Well, Mary doesn't know that she received Bridget's blog because of the fact is Bridget didn't put in the RSS feed asking Mary to subscribe to it. Follow me? So you always want to add in the really simple syndication, excuse me, to make sure that your blog is passed on to other networks so you gain an audience of followers and you always have more people that are reading your blog in the blog sphere once the blog sphere is the blogging universe. The universe of blogging communities is known as the blogosphere. And that's how you gain more followers, more readers, and the more you gain, now it starts to add up to you having a worthy audience and affiliates like that. With this information, you should be ready to launch your blog. How do you launch your blog? First, you have to have content. Remember what content was? Content is the information that will be posted on your blog. Second, you want to make sure your blog is eye appealing. Third, you want to make certain that once you have your blog all prepared, that the layout is going to be reader friendly. That's why you want to customize it so therefore your blog is kind of like your signature. It's all about you. One last thing about launching your blog. Once you launch your blog, you've created the blog because you went into Blogger or you went into WordPress. You found the templates, you put in your own graphics, you put in your own information, you mixed up your own recipe. After that, then you turned around and you got a lot of people that became your audience by using RSS feed for the syndication. And you now have a blog, and you have a blog network, and you now are an avid blogger. So how do you make money from all of that? Because you wanted to know how much it costs, how do you make money? How do you generate an income with that blogging? That's right. You both have the correct answer. First, you want to make sure you create what's known as your brand. Your signature blog is your brand. And once you create your brand, you'll be able to start generating income by becoming, by signing up to become an affiliate. So affiliates or companies that post links on your blog, you have those links that you acquire from the companies. If you're a mom, if you're a new mom, some of the links that you might want to post are for Pampers.com, PNG Products. And for posting those and other moms go onto your site and see those posts, they become loyal buyers of the product. They know, and the more people that check out your blog and the more affiliates you have, the more the company wants to pay you because other people purchased their product because it was on your link. You also use keywords. Keywords are search engine op optimization. That helps to increase the ranking of your blog on the internet. So you're not just on the internet and people don't find you. If you're a mom and your blog is about a new baby, you would put newborns as your first keyword. Second would be babies. 
third would be mommies, and the fourth would be pregnancy. So those keywords would be for any new mom or any pregnant mom who wants to find out more information about babies. And therefore, afterwards, you add in your affiliate links, and those affiliate links that you use are the sponsors that allow you to put their links onto your site and the people that click your blog and open those links, they help to gain you more points, I guess I would say points, that's the easiest way to say it, gain you more points as being, and that's analyzed in Google Analytics and therefore you are now gaining more money through monetization from just putting your blog, links, ad banners, all of those are ways that you gain money from being a blogger. Something that you did as a relative hobby that's bringing you in a little bit of cash. So do you solicit those sponsors? Do you approach them and say, so how do they, how do they decide know? that they want to, they link on your site? Well, how they know, first of all, is that you go to sites called Commission Junction. I didn't put that on there. Commission Junction. Or you Google affiliates. And if you Google affiliates, you'll have a ton of affiliates that come up. And then you go in and sign a little agreement in order to meet their standards. And that's how you get paid. You do have to sign a contractual agreement with the affiliates that you link with. Any other questions? But you simply go in and Google affiliates and you'll find a ton of them. But Commission Junction is the most popular. And different affiliates pay out at different times, but most of it is relatively small until you have a huge following of readers. Ad banners and AdSense are also words that you can use. Also types of monetization, monetization tools you can use in order to also generate income from your blog. Couple of tips. The first tip is that you want to make sure that you remember that most blogging is free. You may decide that you want to have a more custom look for your blog, especially if it's a corporate blog, and you can go in, even with Blogger, and they do have some paid templates. So it's various sites, and you look for free or paid templates. Another thing that you want to remember when you are blogging, I made it easy for you, is that you need to always decide how you want your blog to look and feel not to you, but to your audience. It may look great to you, but if you're not getting readers, it doesn't, it's something wrong with your blog. You also want to do another thing. The more color that you use in your blog, especially for younger people, it's more eye-catching. For older people, not so much. So for older people, a little less color, Younger people, a little more color. Well, you can do this. You can take the color and turn it into sort of a tone. So by toning it down, remember, you want to tone it down for one set, and it depends on who your audience is. Who are you trying to attract? If I'm 20-something, I'm trying to attract other 20-something. So I'm going to use a lot of color. But if I'm over that, which I am, I'm not trying to get the attention of a 20-year-old, not unless he's a rich one. <laughs> the next thing, I'm glad I hear you all breathing. We're almost done. We're rounding the bend. The next thing, as I said, when you're making sure that you're doing a blog and it's eye appealing to your audience, you don't have to just make that blog where it's boring. You want it to be interesting. Say it with me now. Interesting. <laughs> because nobody wants to sit there and read a boring book. They won't read a boring blog. So even if you are talking about roses, they say, oh my goodness, I love roses. I went and found this rose bush. 
give me something that I don't know about roses, such as I make my roses grow by adding an extra little bit of coffee and a little hemp. Uh -oh. <laughs> you didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Those roses really get high. <laughs> They blow in the wind, and when the other roses are drooping, my roses are. <laughs> you ever so, consume your roses? Do I ever do what? Consume your roses? I, I, all, I do all the time. You just go past them. <laughs> but that's eye-catching entry. That's a good one. Woo Interesting information that your audience may not even know that you've shared with them. So you add those little tidbits that get them interested. And humor. Humor is the number one way to pull people into your blog. My son told me something the other day, and I'm definitely going to put it on the blog. But before I share that, how many of you all have seen that McDonald's commercial where the lady is sitting there next to the other lady, the little old lady, and they're eating the oatmeal? And she said, I have to blog about that. Baby, what is that? And it's McDonald's newest oatmeal. And it has blueberries. And it just went viral because in a matter of minutes, she took the girl's picture, posted the information on a blog. Just that quick. Well, what my son shared with me the other day that I have to blog about, I asked him, do you have life insurance, <coughs> health insurance? And he said, Mom, yes, I do, my son's an adult. Well, who's your beneficiary? He said, my sisters. Your sisters? <laughs> he said, yes, because by the time I die, by the time I die, you won't need anything, and dad will die before me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I asked him one more question. I said, what color would you like to be buried in when you die? Since I know I'm going to outlive you. He said, oh, you don't have to buy me a fancy suit. I came here, and I'll leave here. <laughs> <laughs> you can go and t have the suit tattooed on me, and it only has to go to the top half. <laughs> because they won't see the bottom before the casket. And I'm like, I, I thought, I have to blog about that. <laughs> Moving right along. Didn't you find that interesting? Yes. Yeah, interesting. <laughs> If you create your content, create your layout, formulize your style, use a simple system that works for each and every blog, even though they're different subjects, it'll make it easy for you to feel like you've gone from being a novice to a professional blogger in literally no time flat. So use those simple ingredients to master your blogs. Now, a few words of caution. Anything that you say in cyberspace, you shout it in a room. Mm -hmm. So be careful what you add. I just told you all some stuff. But see, I left out a few words. <laughs> you also want to make sure that you stop and think about what you're posting. I see so much bad content on Facebook, and I'm thinking, why did they post that? You also want to make sure that you're not offending your readers and you're not <coughs> stealing someone's copyrighted information. So you have to have, you have to abide by copyright infringement laws even when you are blogging. Make sure that it's copy free in order to, for you to use it. The other thing that most people don't think about when they're adding a blog is that Every culture, your blog is going viral, so it's global. So I can be in China looking at your blog. So I want to make sure that the words I use are not even offensive to someone that's Asian. So be careful, because some words that we say just as normal conversation, they're offensive to someone else. And one word that I hate hearing is a word that is overused by a lot of African Americans and they even put it in a blog. 
I can't say that. <laughs> I said I ain't carrying this, so why would I use it? Jackie, nope. since it's next to you, probably also want to keep your language a little more simple. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And don't shout. In your blogging, don't use a lot of exclamation points like you're shouting in capital letters. And make sure that your business is not broadcasted to people that you don't want to know. You don't want them to know that you're going out of town in about 15 minutes because the person that's reading your blog may be next door waiting for you to leave. Mm -hmm. So don't broadcast all your business. You can say that I love tropical weather and I find the weather in Hawaii is beautiful around March or April or September. Now I didn't tell you when I was leaving. I said the weather's beautiful March, April, or September. So, so, so tell me, can't get it out. Anyway, in the spring, summer. One recent safety tip I've heard for cyberspace is that you should report your vacation online after you return. Mm -hmm. Yes. Another thing you can do is you can say something like, um, we love traveling <coughs> to the Northeast, but we don't always get a chance to go when we like. I didn't tell you when I left, I just told you that I like traveling to the Northeast. Or I may have said something like, it's, it's as hot here as it is in Atlanta. Now I didn't tell you how I know that because I may have saw that on the Weather Channel. I didn't say I just went to Atlanta. Or I'm on my way to Atlanta and I hope the weather's nice. So you have to be very discreet about some of the things that you put on your blog because you don't want to open yourself up for identity theft, you don't want to open yourself up for somebody that may even start stalking you because you're posting information and you're posting stuff that is attracting Tom back there. <laughs> These are just a few references that I would like for you all to take a minute and go online, look over them, they're on your sheet, on the back of your sheet, the references that are listed to create the information that you see. You have, um, you should have one of these packets. You should have one of these packets. Did you guys grab some packets? No, no, no. You should have some black and white copies, some packets. Did you all get any? Okay. On the last sheet, there should be a list of references. And most of the references that you heard me mention, they're on, the links to those sites are on the back of this, your reference sheet. So if you missed writing some of it down, it's there. One thing you can do to learn about blogging if you don't want to read all the information is go on YouTube. YouTube has, a ton, has tons of instructional videos that can teach you literally everything, but especially blogging. So you can go to you type in blogging videos or instructional videos, and in YouTube, it'll take you through front, start to finish on the instructions of how to blog. You can go to Google and type in blogging. And if you go, or how to blog, now, as I said with Google, it's going to be easy because with Google, Google owns Blogger. The first thing they're going to, the first site they're going to send you to is their site. That's the first that will come up in your search engine. So when you type in blogging, the first one that will pop up is Blogger. The next one will probably be WordPress. There's another popular one that's called Stumble Upon Us. Then there's Dig. There's, there's Read It. There's a great book that's called Professional Blogging for Dummies and the Everything Guide to Blogging. One of my favorites is Blogging for Fame and Fortune. Everything I learned, I sat there at the library or at the bookstore and I started reading these books and the next thing I started using a little bit of the information here and adding a little there, mixing up my own recipe. 
by the next, by within a week or so, I was like, wow, I really got this. Then I went home, sat down, clicked on the computer, and Blogger took me through everything I needed to know. I could have missed some of those books, but I learned a lot of things from the books that Blogger didn't tell me. So I've just shared that information with you to make it easier. That way, Raymond, you don't have to wait for me to do your blog. You can do this. <laughs> I have a question. On yes. The, um, now, while you're constructing your web blog, mm -hmm. you, at that point, you're not ready to publish it. Yes, you are. Well, while you're constructing it, what you can do is you can add in content, and then you can put it in what's called a draft. And when you have it in a draft, you can preview it. And afterwards, what you do is you hit the preview, and it allows you to see what it will look like on the internet. If you want to add more content, take away a little bit more content, then you keep adding to your draft. You can pick, uh, you can embed images by being able to click on the little thing that says images, and it's a little, looks like a little picture. And you click that and you can download images off of the other sites that you want to put into your blog. You can download pictures that you already have saved on your computer, such as pictures that you took from your family vacations that you don't want anybody else to know about when you left and went out of town. Well, okay, suppose, okay, I, I, for me, it, mm -hmm. suppose it takes me four days. I don't want to publish it until I'm ready. Okay. So it sounds like as long as it's in draft? It's in draft. It's in preview film. It's not published. Okay. It's not published. And even if you do publish, you can always go and hit the edit button and re take out things, change it. Even when you have a blog published, you can always add more to it, create more blogs. You can create a list of blogs all regarding, regarding the same content. But it's different because you added a different message or a different color or some different interesting facts. But as long as it's in draft. As long as it's in draft where you just have to preview it, yeah. it's not until you hit post. Another thing you can do is that you can take it and add in a certain date that you want your blog to post. It will ask you if you want to post, post the blog right now or if you want to save it for later. You can create 20 blogs, which is what most avid bloggers do. They create a ton of blogs, but they have them all scheduled to post at different times. So they're not sitting there every day creating those blogs. They did two hours worth of blogging, created 15 or 20 blogs, and then they go back and have it all scheduled to post at a different time. But it looks like to you, the reader, that they just posted every day at 6 o'clock. You can even change the time in which your blogs are posted. Some of them you can change it within an hour or half an hour, so it always looks like you're posting at a different time. Any other questions? Uh, yes. When you add new content, are you overlaying what's there, or is that additional pages? It's usually additional pages, but you can take away content, you can add content. You can switch out the colors. You can switch out the graphics. However you choose to manage your blog is up to you. So you obviously can create categories on your blog. Yes. <clears throat> and so if you're wanting to time or have scheduled postings, mm -hmm. you're able to actually post within those categories, I mean, that subtitle, is this, oh, really? Okay, yes. So you can be that, that. Okay, great. Yes. You can be as detailed or as creative as you want to be with your blog. You can take a category, let's say my favorite category might be baking. And I have a category that's all about cupcakes. I have another category that's about cookies. I have another category that's about the, my best semi sweet chocolate chips. But all of those are on the same blog. This page, you can also add additional pages. You have your front page. Uh, the reason why I said blog is a little different from a website is because the layouts are similar, but they're not the same. 
They're only similar because with a blog, you don't necessarily have to have the home page, the this page, the about us page. You may have that information in a little content box over to the side. You can have one page and you can have six pages within the same blog. Any other questions? Bridget, you are quiet over there. You were talking about the web posters that are free. Mm -hmm. Is it uh, because they have their own advertisement on their web page or on their blogging page? I believe they're free because Google, as I said before, is the one that owns Blogger, and Google is free. So since Google Google owns Blogger, they just made sure that they most of their stuff is free. They do have some templates that you can purchase, but 99.5% of their stuff is absolutely free. I can't really tell you why they're free. I just like that they are. <laughs> A few sites are not free. Um, I believe that TypePad is not free, and I'm not sure how much Stumble Upon Us costs. But if you want to know if a site is free or not, they usually tell you before you even sign up for that page, for their contract. They'll let you know. And even WordPress has some that are free and some that are paid. If you were to use your blogging site for revenue, Affiliates. Affiliate. Can you still use the free blogging site? Will they let you do that, earn money from their site, even though their site is free? Absolutely. Most people, that's how they generate that chunk change by being able to add the ad banners on their site. The ad banners may be at the top of the at the top of the blog, they may be on the side of the blog, they may be a few ad campaigns in, you know, mixed in the blog. You may have just a few links, so you don't even see the company's name, you just see that there's an invisible link underneath the word diapers. So if I clicked on diapers and I have a mommy blogger, that will take me to the Panther site. So yes, they encourage especially free bloggers because there are more free bloggers than there are paid bloggers. And Perez Hilton, does anyone know who Perez Hilton is? Mm -hmm. Perez Hilton, Perez Hilton. Yeah. He is a celebrity blogger who goes to all the celebrity functions, gets in because he's going to write about what they wore, who they spoke to, what they drank, the food. And he is one of the most popular and famous bloggers, and that's all he does, is blog. Any other questions? That leads me to the question of when you say that these affiliates will pay you, A, how many followers do you think you need, some general idea, and two, when you talk about chunk change, what really give me an idea of what chunk change is. Is okay. that like a thousand dollars? Is that less than that. It really depends on how many affiliates you have, how often you post, how wide your readership is, and how many times that you are making sure other people are connecting with the links that you have posted on your blog. So the amount of money you make is pretty much up to you depending on how much work you're, you're willing to put into your blog site. <coughs> to attract your audience to attract the attention from the lady that's in the back who doesn't know you have a blog. What did you need to do? Use what symbol? RSS. What does that stand for again? You need to have subscribers. The more subscribers, the more networks, the more comments, the more feeds, the more moolah. Any other questions? Uh, this is like a social networking opportunity, and there are so many. Would you rank an importance, or could you do that? Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, 
blogging. Uh, are they all different? Or I don't, I don't know how to. That's a good question. That I, I don't have all that time to do all of them. Okay, let me make it simple for you. Social media. The first one that I spoke about that I've discussed with you today is blogging. Blogging is basically journaling with the community, exchanging information within your community. With Twitter, you were using 140 characters to create a conversation. You may tweet. Celebrities love Twitter because they may tweet about their upcoming promotion for their album their new movie that's coming out. They may tweet about something as simple as Tom Cruise's marital trouble. So those are tweets, and that goes out to everybody that's a part of your network that's looking at your tweets. That's Twitter. Facebook is another form of social media. Facebook is where you can create blogs on Facebook and connect with an audience. You're also social networking. All of these are known as social networking. They're just different mediums in which you network within various communities. And with the blog, what you're doing is basically making sure that you are going into a huge universe. My universe may be simply the universe of gardeners, the universe of bankers, the universe of freelance journalists, so those are the people I want to connect with, other than just the people who know me. If you have a cause, as a politician, politicians have blogs. Organizations have blogs. Corporations have blogs. Mommies have blogs. And mommies are making the most amount of money from their blogs with those banners and affiliate links. And they're also mommies that are sitting there and they're telling you where to shop, where to use your coupons, how to get extra coupons, how did they do that? On a blog. So those are the different ways. One is a journal. That's your blog. Think of it as if you took your journal, opened it up, and let everyone read and share your thoughts. The other one, you just sent out a little message. I sent you a note. That's a tweet. So I short and sweet told you what I need to say. And that's when you hear kids talking about texting and stuff. And the other one you turned around and you created a video, and that's a bit video log. But if you have any additional questions after this workshop, I forgot to put my email on the page, but you can look me up under Jacqueline Whitey Jones on Facebook if you're on Facebook and send me any of your questions through a message and I'll be glad to answer them. Or else, you can just write me and I'll be glad to let you know. But you check out my blog. I left both the blog pages and I'll send you back, uh, send you back a response. Are there any additional questions before we wrap up this presentation? Well, that's a wrap. I want to thank Dory and Mary. Dory of Smedley Hometown Memorial Toastmasters, as well as Mary from River City, as well as Tony Gardner. Tony, which club are you with again? Cave Springs. Cave Springs. Cave Springs. Tom Kasha for the presentation equipment. Tim Spezia, my video man. <laughs> and of course, a presentation is not a presentation without all of you. So please give yourself a warm round of applause. <clears throat> okay, all done. Okay. Thank you, Jackie, for being here today and for doing this presentation for us. And we thank all of you for coming. We have a sign-in sheet back there. We ask you to sign your name, give us your information. And we also have a little 
advertisement for the other club involved. <laughs> <laughs> Medley Hometown Memorial Club, which meets near Waverly, Illinois. Anybody know where that is? <laughs> Why do we meet in Waverly, Illinois of all the places? Well, because it's the home of Dr. Ralph C. Smedley who founded Toastmasters. So we try to keep that club going forever and ever and ever in tribute to Dr. Smedley. His house is still there. You could always visit the, the Waverly Hometown Toastmasters Club. Again, thank you all for coming. We hope to see you at our next workshop, which will probably be in a few months. So and we, Smedley meets tomorrow. And Smedley meets tomorrow, so you're all welcome to come if you like. Does he meet here? No, it meets in near Waverly, Illinois. It's just there, off the interstate, though, in Vernon. It's very convenient to Exit 82 off of Highway 55 going north in Illinois. Well, thank you. And thank you. Got, you all got away with something. I'm supposed to quiz you, so I'm going to quiz, I'm going to quiz you really quick. <laughs> really, really quick. <laughs> Tell me, what are the two most popular sites? Blogger and WordPress. When you create a, a blog and it's used as a, it's used as a, a YouTube, what is that called? Video. What's the most common type of blogs that are created? Common type. Most popular type of blogs that are created are what? Speak up, speak up. Text. Ding, 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 ding. Yes. And if you create a blog and it's tweeted, what kind of blog is that? It's known as a what? I told you all you weren't paying attention. Podcast. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an audio. Tweet. If oh. it's a blog that's a vocal blog, it's an audio blog. Last thing. Blogging is done by who? Okay. Bloggers. Bloggers. That's right. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> blogging is done by bloggers. So when you create blogs, you are known as the a blogger. A blogger. Thank you. Have you learned anything today? <laughs> Last question. What is the blogging universe called? <laughs> you learned those technical terms. Thank you. That concludes my presentation. I taught you something. Good job.